call of the year semi-final three cast your vote. Coaches make dozens of decisions in every game. Most of them aren't that noticeable. Some of them very much are. Some calls can change a game. Some are just thrilling to watch. Sometimes it's not one call but an entire game plan. Sometimes because college football is supposed to be fun, it's about trick plays. Each week in this season, USA Today Sports selected four calls from across the nation that we think ranked among the best decisions for the Amway Coach's Call of the Week. You, the fans, chose the best of the best. From those winners, you now get a chance to pick the best of the year. There will be three weeks of semifinals, with four weekly winners from which to choose. In the week before the college football playoff title game, you will have a chance to choose from among those three winners for the single best call of the year. Voting closes at 4 p.m. Thursday. Week 5. The Pirates is known for his offensive prowess, and the number 16 Cougars got plenty accomplished, particularly through the air. Luke Falk threw for 340 yards and two TTs, in their 30-27 upset of number 5 USC on September 29. But the key might have been Leach's defense which held Trojans QB Sand Arnold to 164 yards passing and 0 TDs through the air. One defining play came with 127 left, on 2nd and 10 from the USC 25 as Darnold tried to mount a final drive. On a blitz, linebacker Jihad Woods hit Darnold and forced a fumble, which was recovered by Washington State. Game over. Grog for everyone. Week 10. The Hawkeyes shook up the college football world with a 55-24 thrashing of Ohio State on November 4. Iowa's entire game plan should be commended, but a pair of third-quarter plays, back-to-back, -back, buried the Buckeyes. On 4th and 3 from Ohio State 20 with Iowa leading 31-17, the Hawkeyes lined up it's hard to describe, frankly, good thing there is video with punter Colton race to turn in, well, punt formation. But Ray Stitter took the snap, faked a throw to the right and then shot put a pass to a wide-open Tyler Kluver, who stumbled and fell at the two. On the next play, a standard goal line set, Cuban Nathan Stanley, with a Buckeyes defender wrapped around his leg, found T.J. Hawkinson for the touchdown. Iowa 38, Ohio State 17. The route was on. Week 6. The Cyclones coach made all kinds of winning calls October 7th in a 38-31 victory against No. 3 Oklahoma. That included getting superior play out of a backup QB, senior Kyle Kempt, who had thrown but two passes in his career, starter Jacob Park was out, and getting middle linebacker Joel Lanning, who has 14 starts at QB, into the game on offense and defense. Lanning finished with eight tackles, a sack a fumble recovery. He was also 2 for 3 passing for 25 yards and had 9 carries for 35 yards. Perhaps the biggest call of the day? The Cyclones, who had trailed 14-0 and 24-10, scored on a 28-yard TD pass from Kemp to Marky Murdoch to get within 24-22 late in the third quarter. Campbell decided to go for 2 in the tie. Kemp found to Alan Lazard for deuce. With that, Boom, the Cyclones grabbed the momentum. And the victory. Here are the day's highlights. The two-point conversion is at about 2.55. Week 8, when you have a player the caliber of Saquon Barkley, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know you get the ball in his hands as often as you can. Franklin's Nittany Lions found ways to do that October 21st in a massive 42-13 win against Michigan. On the first possession of the game, on second and four from the Penn State 31, Barkley lined up in the backfield next to QB Trace McSorley in the shotgun. Barkley took the direct snap, held the ball as if to hand off as McSorley swept past him headed to the right side of the field. Barkley then cut left as the aggressive Michigan defense went with McSorley and sprinted 69 yards for a tone-setting TD. Voting closes at 4 p.m. Thursday.